You didn't think I'd be playing with a chainsaw on YouTube, did you? No. <laughs> Cover's still on. It's not even running. Sound effects. Thank you, uh, Epidemic Sound. Link below. But really, what this video is about is that that Mind Lab Excalibur shaft, it's it's frozen shut. I cannot get it apart. And that sucks because I need to travel with it and I need it to fit in a suitcase. So, in this video, I have the Anderson shaft and it's the travel version. So we're gonna get it set up on the Mind Lab Excalibur and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, how it looks, and then I can't wait to get everything packed. That'll be in another video, but right now, we're gonna get that Anderson shaft put on the Excalibur, and uh, it's getting hot out here. I think I need something to drink. All right, we'll see you guys up in the studio. <laughs> you enjoyed that fun little intro but we're gonna get into it I'm gonna give you basically a step-by-step -step guide on how to assemble your over under Anderson travel shaft so hopefully you guys find this helpful let's get into it so here is the Anderson over under travel shaft looking good of course we have the under section where you're going to be attaching the housing unit for the Excalibur comes in at just 20 inches as far as the middle rod goes, of course, you have your different pilot holes. You can adjust to whatever your height is. And again, this comes in at 20 inches, makes it super portable. And you have your little tightening screw once you insert that rod into the upper portion. Now for me, I had to get the lower extension rod as well. This is the 24 inch. Now the head adds an extra four inches, just so you guys know if you are gonna be traveling. Now when we get this set up, you're gonna to wanna to back out all of these screws because you don't want to insert that rod and end up just scraping it or of course not having it fit. Double check with your finger, give it a little inspection. And once it's backed out, just go ahead, push the pins down and we're gonna go ahead, pop it in. Tighten that screw down and good to go. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing with the lower rod. Back this out, double check it. Yep, all right, we should be good. Now for me, I'm a little OCD when it comes to this. I'm gonna take the Anderson label and make sure that that is facing out. Doesn't really matter if it is in or out. You've got pins on both sides. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to the sixth position. I am about 5'10", maybe 5'11 on a good day. But I think the sixth hole up. And there you have it, it is completely assembled. But of course, we still gotta get the actual Excalibur housing on and we will do that coming up. Hey, if you could take a quick second, if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. The algorithm will get this to more people looking for information about this topic. If you really love me, punch that subscribe button real quick. But if you really, really love me, bong the bell and I'll tell you where I got this awesome laser cut mercury dime. It's pretty spiffy, what do you think, huh? 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 All right, back to the tutorial. So now we're gonna finish assembling the lower rod so that we can get the coil on here. Anderson does send the hardware here. You've got your bolt, screw, and a couple of neoprene rubber washers. Now I did run into an issue here, and it has to do with the fit onto the actual coil head. It was really tight, so I don't know if there's a sizing issue or if it was my coil. I actually had to drill out these neoprene washers just a little bit to actually get that bolt to go in a little smoother, it was very difficult. I think it has something to do with when you actually insert it into the lower rod, it just compresses it a little bit, and that's why it made getting that bolt through just that much more difficult. But we drilled those out and it fits through a lot smoother now, and you'll see that once we get the coil actually attached. But there were a few other issues that we came up on. So out of the box, Anderson does send a couple of extra little goodies, and probably you would think one of the most important would be these guys, directions, right? Well, pfft, I'm a guy, I don't follow directions. Although, I did take a look at them, and there's one problem. I guess there's two problems, right? There actually is no instructions on how to properly assemble the unit. It's just a little bit more of maintenance and care, which are great suggestions, but if you're not super mechanical like myself, you might take a little bit longer or struggle. Hence, that's why I'm making this video, so hopefully that it helps you. But the other thing, there's no instructions for the lower rod assembly as well. Again, pretty 
basic and cut and dry, but there were a few things that tripped me up, gave me a little bit of headache. I reached out to Anderson. They definitely helped me out. So thank you, Anderson, for that. Oh, and Anderson, thank you for the uh, shark coconut car freshener. And I gotta admit, it smells pretty delightful. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the middle rod as we attach the housing unit to the upper portion of the over under shaft. To do that, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead, back these bolts out so that we can detach the undercarriage of the shaft. Now this is where your housing is going to end up attaching. You've got these three sets of push pins and it honestly makes it very, very simple to get the Excalibur housing on to your over under shaft. Here you can see we've got those and yeah, it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about screws and bolts falling off when you're out swinging, minus this little part here. But if those little spacers fall out, they are very easy to pop back on. You just don't want to lose those at any point during travel. So make sure that you do have that under carriage portion uh, nice and tight. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to get the housing unit all set up here. And for me, I just like to line everything up so that I can see it. Now, the easiest way to get this on is to kind of come in at a little bit of an angle as you push both of those pins in and it will snap in place. Now, the second part of this was a little bit tricky. Uh, it's almost like I need five other sets of hands to do. But again, if you come in kind of at an angle and do one first and then push the other portion down, everything should snap into place for you. And yeah, I would say that looks pretty good. Now, again, just go ahead and set it back down. You're going to want to line it up so that the arm cuff is in the same direction as where your coil cable is coming out of. This will just help ensure that you mount this in the proper orientation uh, as we attach this under portion to the arm cuff. And now I'm going to set it up so that the control knobs are facing away from me because when I attach this I want those to be on my outside hip. Now I'm right handed so I'm going to have those pointing up towards the top and now we'll just go ahead and lift this into place let that drop in and of course you can see how when we pick it up the controls are going to be to the outside so we just have to tighten them down and get everything into place here get this last bolt in and yep looks good and we should have the upper portion of the anderson shaft complete and of course you can see once we put our arm through and have it upright as if we were swinging the control knobs are facing away from me. So quick disclaimer, the original knob guard, it doesn't fit this setup. You have to get one specifically made by Anderson or one of their dealers, and I've got one on the way. All right, so moving on to the coil, here's where I had an issue. You get the hardware, you get some shims, wing nuts, all that good stuff, but you can see that it's just a few millimeters too wide. It's actually bowing the area where you're supposed to connect it to the coil, uh, threading that bolt through. Now again, I had to drill out those holes just a little bit because they were so tight as it was so compressed, but we got it in there. Now we can thread the bolt through, but yeah, might be something Anderson wants to take a look at as far as the measurements for the lower rod head and actually getting it to fit into these coils. but. Regardless, we got it in. We're going to go ahead, tighten this on, and our coil should be good to go. Now, what I did was wrap the entire coil around first, and as you can see, you really want to wrap the coil going over, not under, so then that way you're not pinching the coil when it lays flat like this. And finally, we're going to go ahead, we're going to just tighten everything up. We've got these nice little Velcro straps. I bought these on Amazon. These are six inch straps and they work wonderful. Just keep everything nice and orderly. I love good cable management, but links below if you guys are looking for these just to add to any detector really that you have. All right, let's check it out. Here it is, the final product. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate your thoughts. And if you think I missed anything, I'm always open to suggestions, but 
yeah, I think everything's looking good. The cable management's there. The knobs are pointing out away from the shaft, so they're not going to bump into my hips as I'm swinging. And of course, we've got it tightened down, cinched up. Yeah, we're ready to swing. Well, there you have it, the complete assembly for the Anderson shaft for the MindLab Excalibur II. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't had a chance, check out this video right here about the CKG scoop and my upcoming trip down to the Bahamas. Until next time, keep swinging for the ring.